all right <clears throat> hey guys welcome back to the channel my name is brian from khawks nation and I, <laughs> before anything else i just want to apologize real quick i know <clears throat> i am super late on covering the first half of this whole uh facility event units that have come out for part one i guess you could say uh yeah the part one showcase this one uh this one part two just came out though so i'm not really too late on that one uh although just to kind of help explain real quick i have been sick for like the past like week and a half or so which is why i haven't really been making any videos or so so just a little bit of context there not really much in my control that i can do about that but at the very least i'm hoping to cover that now cover it now for any of you who still wish to hear my insight uh or at least my thoughts about these new units okay so without further ado let's go ahead and we'll start off with part one of stirring shadows cover all the new units in here so what we'll do first i'll go over all of the units then i'll describe what my thoughts about them do i think they're good or not and then i'll talk about whether or not i think you should pull it okay so starting off we have five star shadow uh lachna who's a lance unit spear unit lancing or whatever it calls she's an attack unit her activated ability first one chaos gift deals shadow damage to the target and nearby enemies poison foes take extra damage continually tapping the screen during the attack will unleash additional blows with up to a maximum of four second activated ability sundering shadow deals set shadow damage to enemies directly ahead co ability plus 15 percent hp the whole team uh first passive ability the faceless god 2 when shape-shifting lathna will transform into narlothotep regardless of what dragon she is equipped with grants an hp regeneration buff for 20 seconds each time shapeshift she has 100 percent paralysis resist and increases dragon uh shapeshift time by 20 percent those were her passive next up we have Natharlotep, who is just a return repeat, okay? Uh, he's not a new unit. He's been out in the game for quite some time already. So I'm not... I, I guess I'll... Uh, uh, yeah, I'll quickly go over him real quick. Just just as a kind of quick reminder for anybody out there. Uh, he has an activated ability, all-encompassing darkness. Deals shadow damage to enemies directly ahead. Passive abilities. Uh, if you're attuned to shadow and your HP is 30%, means you have plus 50% strength. Uh, second, passive ability, Moonlight, Moonlit Howl 2, if you're attuned to shadow, grants the user the bloody tongue effect for 20 seconds when HP drops to 30%. This effect grants the user a one use shield that nullifies damage less than 60% of their maximum HP, increases their strength by 30%. The effects do not stack and are lost upon taking damage. All right, so that's part one units. Now, let's go ahead and go over the part two units and what they do. So, for the adventure, we have a five star wind staff user, Akasha. He is a healing unit. First activated ability, Akashic Repose. Restores HP to all allies and continues healing over the next 15 seconds. Second activated ability, Vital Gate. It creates a buff zone that lasts for 10 seconds and gradually fills the skill gauges of adventurers inside it. Co ability is plus 20% recovery potency. First passive ability, skill prep plus 100%. Uh, also has fog resistance plus 100%, as well as HP 70% equals H, uh, plus 15% healing. So that is Kasha. Next up, we have the five star wind dragon aster i don't know if i'm pronouncing that quick uh correctly he has a kind of a crazy look to him i, I can't even really make out what his form is <laughs> to be honest all right his activated ability is called void valley deals wind damage to the target and nearby enemies and inflicts sleep passive abilities if you're attuned to wind plus 45 percent strength you're attuned to win as well he has prime strength plus 50 percent which is a nice little bonus all right so those are all of the new units or at least the featured units in this current facility event now going back to part one starting from there i'll go over my thoughts about each of the new units and whether or not and then after that i'll go into whether or not i think you should actually 
pull for any of these uh any of these units so starting off with lathna okay uh for the chaos gift this deals shadow damage to the target nearby enemies poison foes take extra damage continue to tap on the screen during the attack while unleash additional damage sundering blow direct damage to enemies directly ahead uh faceless god transforms into lath or uh narlithotep 100 paralysis resist and extra dragon time so overall i personally don't find lathna that great um it, it it's basically in like in a i don't want to describe it it basically feels like a dumbed down version of galamim if that makes sense which I guess it, after thinking about it, after just saying that out loud, I guess kind of makes sense considering the fact that Lothna is not a Gala unit herself. So I'd be willing to bet that if she does get a Gala unit version sometime in the future, then she probably would be on the same part as Gala Mim. Um, so that probably get, that, that kind of makes more sense after saying it out loud and thinking about it. Um, but at least in her current form, in this form right here, she honestly doesn't really feel that great. The fact that she poisons... Oh no, she doesn't poison. Yeah, it just doesn't feel that great. She has a... Her Sundering Shadow only deals shadow damage to enemies directly ahead. Any move that does damage directly ahead, in my opinion, aren't that great. Um, not saying that they can't be used, they're just not that great in my opinion. Um, and the first ability is, is okay. Like, it's good. It's good enough. It's decent. But the, the second ability is just bleh, in my opinion. Uh, on top of the fact that the passive abilities aren't that great either. Increased shape-shifting time by 20%. That's, again, it's okay. But it's nothing fantastic. Uh, I would much prefer something along the lines of like the plus 100% defense that Halloween Mim just got recently. Something like that is like significantly better than just extra shape-shifting time. Just because of the fact that if you're able to take less damage while in dragon form, it helps guarantee, especially against the more difficult opponents who can practically one-shot you when you're in dragon form, that is going to significantly increase the amount of time that you can actually stay within dragon form compared to just, say, like, in a sense, extra HP or extra shape-shifting time. Um, extra shape-shifting time is in a sense, almost just prolonging your dragon form HP. So, and against an opponent who could practically one-shot you anyways, the amount of HP isn't going to make too much of a difference. I would much rather have the, the times two defense, like Halloween Mim does, compared to an extra 20% of HP. So, that's my preference. Uh, that's why I don't really think it's that big of a deal. Um, the Faceless God part, though, the fact you get an a HP regen buff every time you shapeshift, that's an interesting little extra ability uh i don't know how much that's gonna actually help out might a little bit that's that's kind of up in the air but overall i don't really find latha to be that great of a unit so yeah i just don't find her to be that great she she feels like a a borderline four star unit she's like better than a four star unit but not quite five star unit in my opinion so yeah uh in terms of another tap he's just a return um his First passive ability is pretty good. Uh, your strength is increased by 50% when your HP is 30% or higher. That's pretty good. 50, 45 to 50% is pretty much somewhat norm in terms of the strength of some Moon Dragons. Um, the Moonline Howl is just a nice little bonus. Uh, but overall, he's like he's like he's like a good standard dragon. He's like a staple dragon, but nothing crazy to go for. Uh, Going on, let's go into the part two units. So first up, we have Akasha. Now, Akasha, I oh, I have like quarreling thoughts about Akasha just because of the fact that overall, Akasha is is kind of similar to Lothna in my opinion, where she's very, uh, she's kind of disappointing where she's not really bringing enough to the table to warrant me wanting to go for her. Her most notable ability for me is literally her second activated ability, the Vital Gate. Creates a buff stone that lasts 10 seconds 
and gradually fills the skill gauges of adventures inside it. To me, this is the only skill in her entire kit. Look at her real quick. Yeah, pretty much literally the only skill in her entire kit that I think is actually valuable. Just because of the fact that, like I've mentioned multiple times in previous of my uh in, in my previous Tregalia Lost videos, I believe any form of ability such as skill haste that can quickly get your uh reduce the cooldowns of your abilities and be able to use your abilities more often anything that can help that along those lines is one of like the best mechanics in the game in my opinion um one of the best not the best one of the best okay there's there's a, a handful of other ones too uh so vital gate goes exactly alongside that which is nice because then this is just another ability that can help stack along with all the other types of skill haste, similar type of effects. Um, so actual skill haste on top of uh, this, uh, on top of maybe any natural uh, adventurer abilities that the adventurer might have that gives themselves another form of skill haste. Uh, anything of this nature. Okay, like you can, come, you can basically stack like all three or four or whatever various forms of skill haste in order to get like ridiculous amounts of uh skill activation on your units okay this is also notable as well for units such as gala prince who recover their abilities on their own and are not affected by, by actual skill haste uh but because they recover on their own it's basically almost the same thing this isn't this is a very important ability for units like that because this can actually help those type of units that are not affected by normal skill haste abilities uh because of the fact that this is technically according to the game not a skill haste it's just an ability okay so this is like a workaround to actually kind of give them skill haste without actually technically giving them skill haste so that's worth noting but in terms of the rest of her kit, she's very disappointing. Um, her healing ability is very basic. There's already a good chunky handful of four star healing units that do literally the exact same thing as Akasha's uh, Akashic Repos, her healing ability, if not better. Literally, Halloween Loen and uh, Ashleen are the two best healers in the game, in my opinion. And they they have ability they provide so much utility to the team as a four star healer that i could argue that they are probably worth being five star healers to be honest so yeah already very terrible actual healing uh, ability the vital gaze pretty much the only thing worth noting skill prep is okay and I, like i've always had mixed emotions about skill prep and everything else is just kind of like standard amongst your passes so that's my thoughts about that next up so next up in terms of the five star haster the, the wind dragon unit the uh the active ability void valley deals wind damage to target nearby enemies and afflict sleep that's that's our, that's kind of decent i mean it's nothing special uh but it's it's better than nothing at least it's not just straight up you know deal damage directly in front of you type of attack at least it has a little bit of an aoe ability and it inflicts a status ailment so it's it's okay nothing to go with not so um the passive abilities as well are i would like they're all so decent they're about like standard they're just like like if i were to say if i were to give like a rating in terms of his passives i would give it like a c plus okay maybe like a b minus c plus that would be like where i would label his passes just because of the fact that the plus 45 percent wins uh strength when attuned to win that is normal that's like a staple ability among dragons right now among the best dragons i should say right now uh 45 50 that's that's kind of like the norm so it's kind of like a staple uh so i don't really there's not really too much to be said about this. It's nothing special, if that's any, like, if anything. Uh, the only thing that really helps tip the scales to give it that like C plus B minus type rating instead of just being a standard C 
is the fact that the it has the prime strength, which has helps uh, helps provide just a little bit extra more strength as well uh, to to the to the unit to your adventure that you're controlling. That's that's like that's the only reason. But even then, it's like there's still nothing crazy about Hazard that makes me go, "Ooh, let me go for them." So overall, I would say across both of the uh of the showcases stirring shadows part one as well as part two pretty much almost every single unit that's been introduced isn't that great in my opinion either they're disappointing and lackluster um or they're just simply or they're decent but not good enough to warrant chasing up so whether or not you should actually pull for these units i personally believe you should just hang on to your worm right uh, just wait for a better banner, wait for better units to come out, or even wait for better reprints to come out for that matter. Just wait for something better to come out. Uh, it's also worth keeping in mind as well that the Mega Man event is coming fairly soon. Don't remember the exact date off the top of my head, but it is coming fairly soon. Uh, it was confirmed as well, I believe, that Mega Man himself would be coming as the friend unit uh, as part of the event. Okay, so it's not something you have to pull for, but it is the friend unit. Uh, but that does not mean that it's not possible that, you know, maybe some of Mega Man's friends might come up as units uh, in a unit showcase for all we know. So I would pr I would probably prefer or, you know, recommend maybe saving up your Worm, worm Right for that event instead uh, and just skip this, this one entirely. But other than that, that was it for today, guys. Go ahead and let me know what your thoughts and opinions are about the latest showcase in the comment section down below. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like, subscribe, and hit that bell button. It's the best way I know when to upload more videos such as this one. My name is Brian from Chaos Nation. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace, guys.